We'll call it close enough to noon to open the uh, work session of November 9th. The meeting is being recorded. <clears throat> With no public hearing, uh, we'll open some discussion. CARES Act. Uh, a couple more requests came in. Uh, they've been in your email, such as, I uh, believe, an IOT request, a couple of fire departments. Um, I'll, get, I'll get it to you again. At least two fire departments, and uh, yeah, IT finally gave the last report on the big Other fire. than what's on my list for the meeting? <clears throat> I don't have any IT, so I do need that one. All right, I'll forward that to you. <clears throat> yeah, because, yeah, I think that that's, that's kind of changed, gone back and forth, because I know. Yeah, there's one so more. Uh, I got a letter from Jefferson DeFries as well, so we'll bump with that one. Um, and then, yes, the IT stuff. So. Other than that, yeah, that looks like a complete list to me. Um, anything else for CARES Act? You want? Oh, we'll be taking it. We would actually talk about officially uh, adopting either the uh, two and a half, two and a quarter million, or just the two. Uh, when do we expect to get that report from Decker? Today. 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 Okay, so we could vote on it tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. All right, so that'll be on the agenda for tomorrow. And that's yeah. third round? That's round three. Yep, round three. Hard to believe, isn't it? Yep. Wow. How the year's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy stuff. All right. <laughs> Opening bids for the demolition of one East Main. Do you want to describe that, Lori? This is a, a commercial building in Youngsville Borough that has been falling down for quite a few years and it is in a perilous condition. Probably won't make the winter. Uh, we were going to try and get some other funds for it, but given the condition that it's in, um, we're going to have to go back to using CDBG funds for it and get it down as soon as we can. It's about ready besides this. Um, we have 59,000 CDBG money. 547 allotted for this. Even Borough will pick up any difference if there isn't. Okay. What um, happens to that property once the building has been demolished? Youngsville Borough owns it. Excuse me? Youngsville Borough owns it. Youngsville Borough, property. okay. Um, actually, because it's in a floodplain, probably nothing. Okay, it's in a floodplain. Um, if, if, they, if something does want to be built on that and have to adhere to floodplain regulations, which probably means building it the ground up so it's out of the floodplain. So probably not. Okay. There are adjoining properties that I've heard, you know, express an interest in turning it into a parking lot. Although that would be probably an issue too, because that impervious service mm -hmm. surface might create more yeah, value. Yeah, I don't think there's much. Last, there. last time I when they said the park was about the only thing it could be. Yeah. Okay. I just wasn't sure if because we were using state money to demolish, would there be any ties to that? Um, yes. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. We use has to be a CDBG eligible project for probably seven years after it's closed out, which okay. I have contracts that are 20 years old that haven't been closed out. Okay. All right. That's so. That's what I'm about. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so we have two bids, correct? Uh, mm -hmm. No, one, two, three, four, possibly five. We don't know what the last okay. one is. And are we opening can? What was that? Close to, yes. It was advertised to be open. Yes. Okay. This is good. Okay. Yeah. Nice. That's the soccer board for Emily. Yeah, you got a red card until second day, no? What was going on in here? You got what? Oh, oh dear. Red card until second day. That's not good. He, he, what, it wasn't anything violent. He, all right. You made a play that they have to do the red card. Film enterprises. Uh -huh. um, you can fill out your sheets. Shouldn't be too many or too far to find. Yeah, the total is 30, yes, 37,800. Okay. We've got the certificate of insurance and bond, bond uh -huh. and all that. You want these, right? Okay, thank you. Next, we have Keith 
white excavating, mm -hmm. 38,700. Huh? Very close. Mm -hmm. no Boy, that's way down yeah. compared to what we thought it would be. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and they also have... We've got a few things. They're 50s. Well, it's a good for a CP fund, isn't it? Absolutely. That's another... It's good to see people can do business at stuff. that kind of price, too. Given COVID. This is Fox and Sons. Sixty-two thousand five hundred. Which is they have given us the original estimate at sixty, so it's not shocking for them. The thing is, is I am filming already had an asbestos um, report done or survey done, and all the expenses removed, so that's not. Oh, nice. that's great. <laughs> H. Rao contracting? Yeah. <laughs> 63,200. I mean, 63,200? Yeah. Did each one of the uh, bidders know that? Know what? That they had. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. That just was on? Yes. Yeah, that doesn't come from our office. So, oh. okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so you'll does it belong here? Is that coming back to us to go on tomorrow? Or you know, two weeks? Um, Two weeks. Okay. We have to get insurance stuff back to whoever is here. Okay. May I excuse them? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, now we're also opening uh, the can. Oh, the other way, right? Correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's interesting. You you have to do it this morning. It's not, it's right around the corner. The tan. Oh, yeah. 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 Quite well. North Bus Savings Bank. This is for the $4 million tan. Looks like we didn't ask for multiple tiers this time. Mm -hmm. Tax free interest rate of 1.19% with no commissions. Whew. Yeah. I don't remember it being that low well last year. That's wow. No, it's two something, wasn't it? Tax yeah. free. I think so. Three of one percent subject to Warren County establishing a new deposit account or increasing an existing deposit on the account by a minimum of a million dollars. That's an interesting thing. What? They're giving you a lower interest rate if you increase the current typical money. Yeah. <laughs> interesting play. All right, next, Key Bank. Four million. I'm just going to say, I don't know if that complies with the terms of the, of the proposal. <laughs> well, I think that was just an option, right? Is that just an option? Well, yeah, it's one, it's, you, it's one or two, one or the other. Oh, yeah, they, they, so at least the first one does. They okay. drop it yeah, to yeah, 1.191. No. Okay. <laughs> Fixed rate of 0.98%. Guess key bank? Yeah. Oh, man. I'm not looking forward to 2021. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Maybe, maybe. Well, all right. Where are you? Is it the wow? Oh. Erie Bank. Again, 4 million. Bank qualified tax free, free rate fixed at 1.9513. Whoa, that's way up. 1.9513. One three. One three. I see that's and Key Bank was coming down there. Yeah, Trisha has it now. Yeah, that was what I remember. Point nine eight. Oh, Joe Colosimo is the assistant vice president now. So just what is he? Anything else? Or those are those the three bits? Those are those are it. Now, do you want to uh, award this tomorrow or in two weeks? I, mean, I think at that rate we can. Yeah, we've dealt with all these folks before, so I wouldn't mind it being on the agenda. I mean, worst case scenario is we have to postpone that in two weeks. But yeah, I'd, I'd say put it on the agenda tomorrow. And this is pretty routine, too. Yeah. yeah. If it was like a new contract or something else. Yeah, but. Uh, I'm surprised they're so competitive. 
And that's yeah. what the point That is surprising to me. I suspect that that's what we would go with. <laughs> Who did we have the team with this year? Keybank. Oh, it's Keybank as well. So there you have it. Okay. That, yeah. that's but it's significantly lower than this. <laughs> mm -hmm. That makes sense then. Wow. <laughs> Guys, I don't know. I think we'll be looking towards a rocky year, 2021. Oh yeah, no doubt. Oh, this is prognostication. All right. Well, that's uh, it for new business policy and procedures. Um, the project in the project management class that we're working on is the what we call the county manual. So. I've uh, been working on it with Eric and crew pretty extensively, and we're making good progress on it. Uh, we should have more, probably, when does the class end? Early December? December 8th. Yeah, good. So, uh, I'd say at the beginning of the year, we'll probably have a pretty comprehensive list of stuff to approve. Um, cool. Well, it's nice that you're using that particular venue to, to um, you know, work through an actual real life example. So we actually we'll be... got five real life projects yeah. that we're running through. One yes. is one is that, and that team is me, Riley, uh, Eric, Kaylin, and Kim. Oh, and there's oh, and uh, Meredith Ketchum, because they're in this weird hybrid where they're using some of ours and some of the DHSs. So this is going to solve that problem. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a as you know, the sheriff is uh, trying to get licensure for being a quick response unit. And so Zybel, Heidi, Joni, and Ken are working on that project together. Uh, you guys would be better describing your project. I don't know. Yeah, we didn't get very far. There was only three of us. Uh-oh. <laughs> you got your project charter done. But basically, it's storage of stuff, especially oh. election stuff. It's, it's, what I understood was it's building a template uh, for identifying storage needs, and then you're actually doing a dry run with the elections office. Got it. Um, and then there's a really wonky thing related to the CAD system for 911. I don't even I couldn't even begin to explain what the longs are doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's so wonky. Yes, and then. Uh, no pop tart. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what the other group was. So speaking of projects, that was the update. <laughs> uh, upcoming commissioners meetings tomorrow. Yep. We have the Greek Awareness uh, Proclamation, yeah. some CARES Act stuff, repository bids, TAN acceptance, anything else? No, we want to make sure we read that Greek Awareness. This is um. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Commissioner schedule. Um, let me see. I'm going to try to limit it to about seven to eight hours a day and more in this week. Wednesday we off. Well, probably. It's a holiday, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. I'll probably be getting an inmate crew anyway. <clears throat> yeah, looks like normally I'll be in a little late on Thursday, so I'm getting an extra day <laughs> And hopefully I'll get out of my air casts. Oh my goodness. Great. Uh, otherwise, sending the note on your schedules. So we got Hyatt on uh, tomorrow morning at 8. We have the Northwest, Com Northwest PA Job Connect on Friday. Yes. All virtual. And uh, of course, the November 14th, I think, is the Salvation Army. Um, oh, that is Saturday, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This Saturday is the uh, Salvation Army alternative to uh, the bre <coughs> breakfast, in which they're doing a basket uh, raffle. So that'll be good. Encourage people to go. I'm going to go this week and, and grab some tickets. And if the baskets aren't actually there, you can just choose the categories and what's in them. So. Oh, okay. Thank you very much, Pam, for putting that. Yeah, that's very nice. Um, so it's nice. I hope they get a lot of 
people contributing. So tell friends and family to stop by. I believe it's going to be in their big gymnasium so that there's lots of social distancing, which is good. <clears throat> All right, general discussion. We, uh, can we discuss the CARES Act and just the budget and the timeline for that mm -hmm. briefly? Because um, now that the election's calmed down and we can kind of refocus, I was hoping um, to get some proposals together for that. Like, I know that there was a discussion about like releasing the budget on. And then at the time, I don't think anybody had accounted for the holiday, um, like a Thursday. But I don't think that seems possible at this point. Like we we need to deliberate on that more, right? The budget. Um, well, I mean, we received a draft of it this weekend. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, but if if we're gonna uh, have a conversation about maybe making any changes to it or making any proposals on any changes to it. I mean, we, we need to have that together for a board session or something. Right. You mean we were talking about releasing it this Thursday in order to vote on it before Thanksgiving? No, no, no. I, originally, <coughs> when Eric had pitched the timeline, mm -hmm. his timeline was to release it for the 20-day period on this starting Thursday was the date that he had. Now, at the time when he put that together, because yeah. the meeting is tomorrow, Maybe. not Thursday. Yeah. Uh, right. But anyway, so my point is, is that obviously, like, um, the draft that Eric provided is this weekend. Like, um, I'd like to, you know, continue to review it with him, and then at the same time come up with proposals, you know, to make changes to it, and then so that we can deliberate over those and then make a determination of whether we'd stick with what was proposed or if we would do something different. So does that budget need to be published at a commissioner meeting? Is that no, correct? No, technically. okay. It just needs to be published 20 days before they vote on it. Yeah, that's accurate. So, so basically next week, it has to be released next week sometime in order to vote on it in December, the first December meeting. Okay. So what is that drop dead date then? Is uh, it the next? Thirty-first of December. <laughs> well, <laughs> not to seriously I, drop that day. Yeah, I want to vote on it on the December 9th meeting. Okay. And December. that means that we would have to have it published next week. I mean, we'd have to publish is not the right word. Released for public review, meaning we print out a copy and put it on basically Pam's desk. So we would have to announce that in a public yes. meeting or advertise it. Okay. Yeah. That's so, why it's going to be released. Yeah. So tomorrow, I mean, we could make the announcement tomorrow in our meeting. It will be uh, at least by next date. At next time, exactly. Right. And if it's, so if you back up December 9th, 20 days, where does that put us? Yeah, next Thursday. Yes. Yeah. 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 The 19th. Okay. Well, I mean, the, the issue is, is that, again, if you know, if we're going to do anything different than what was delivered, we'd have to deliver. yeah, we'd have to deliberate over in a public meeting. The question is, well, or it would have to be minor enough that we wouldn't need yeah. to deal with it until we actually vote on it. Yeah. So, for sure, if they're, okay. if it's like 1% different, we're, we, we can keep tinkering with it a little bit, but we can't make any like massive change to it after we release it. Okay. Uh, I see. You can, but I mean, can, but you 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 would deliberate on that at the meeting that you voted on it. I just exactly. like my thing is is I I feel pretty confident that whatever I would propose would be a dramatic difference than what's been presented. Yeah, it's so, more than one percent difference, then you need to do that. So that's so what I'm kind of saying. Like just to like timeline wise, like we don't technically have a work session next Monday. Now we have an advertised work session, right? So mm -hmm. we haven't technically canceled it. Okay, so because it just, I thought we would just change it to executive session. So technically if we hold the but work session. But we did not put that in the paper though. Right, okay. so that's an internal change. We could still have a work session next Monday. Yep. And then go into executive session if we needed to. Yep. So if you would, why don't we set that as the date then? If you had any substantive, substantive 
substantial changes. <laughs> uh, email it to Eric. Yeah. Feel free to copy us as you know, normal practice. We will discuss it next Monday at the work session. And I'll be out of town on that date. Oh, I'll, yeah. I can phone yeah. it. It's fine. Okay. okay. And well, then put it on the agenda then for yeah. the release on the 19th? Yes. So you, you are thinking of some significant changes? Is that what your thought is? Yeah, no, definitely. I, I think that there's still a lot to look at. Um, obviously, like with the election and everything, you know, there's been so much focus on that. Um, you know, I think that how the CARES money plays into the budget, like there's questions that we need to ask Zelenovsky and Axel Rod as far as, you know, um, stuff related to the jail staff, the, you know, stuff related to that, um, what the, you know, you know, and then that could play into next year. Um, you know, there's also questions of you know, um, you know, some of the, you know, some of the different things that we could do, you know, to, uh, you know, change allocations and stuff that would produce a different result. So. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna want to get your proposal to Eric then, right? And then he well, can I, just turn that. Is that what we? Is that how this process works? I'm gonna need his help. Okay. I mean, sure. So, yeah, absolutely. So generally, traditionally, um, because we have a new software system, it's a little bit more, um, I don't want to say complicated, but it's not. Previously, when we would do the budget, we had a, a spreadsheet that was like a, um, a catch-all for everything. And so when you made adjustments, you could see how that would affect the bottom line figure. And, and uh, so traditionally, if there was any kind of a, you know, thing that we would propose change do, you know, you could kind of get a good idea of how that would affect everything. Like in this case, um, I'm not familiar with the software that we have yet. Mm -hmm. um, and really, you know, we'd have to work with Riley and Eric and everything to see how some of the adjustments would change the figures on the bottom lines. Um, so. I did go through with Eric uh, prior to the budget that he submitted, and we went through anything that had a, a large variance from current year, mm -hmm. and he went through and described and explained every one of those, and that's when we recognized that there was some more work to do. So, mm -hmm. assume that those would need would have been addressed mm -hmm. in the document that we received. All clear? Yep. Okay. All clear. Is there session? Anything else? Maybe maybe after we're done with the, the building, because I'll have to talk to Brian Paul. Okay. Okay. I have a guy stopped by Friday and was gone. So I'm hoping to catch him today. Okay. Yes, ma'am? Can I ask a question? Sure. Thank you. Um, you were just talking about the general budget for the county, those deadlines. Yes. I heard the word CARES Act ahead of that, and I was, I was in that vein of thinking. Is there any consideration still underway for a, a regional health director? So um, where we got with that was that it was not a, an effective idea for us to start our own, and we did not get regional buy-in, I guess, from other counties. However, we did have a meeting with the Department of Health for Erie County, and they said that they would essentially send us a menu, if you would, or I guess I called it a menu, mm -hmm. um, of all the card options that we could choose to contract with Erie County in order to do. Now, I have not received that list of things. Uh, we had talked about contact tracing and, mm -hmm. and uh, pandemic specialist services and that sort of thing. Um, I assume that they just got completely bogged down and forgot about us. Although I did ping her probably a week or two ago, just before the election, uh, as a reminder. And uh, I don't think they heard that. I know they didn't that. I think um, that would probably be the most efficient way to go for somebody, some you know, county our size and maybe even including Forest County because... Yeah, they're interested in Talk, they are talking to those other counties that were interested, like Venango, I think, was really the only other one that was pretty gung-ho about it. Um, so Erie's just talking directly with 
with them and with us. So, yeah. well, let's say there's no real progress yet, but we've been doing some of the, that internally. So, for instance, our Department of uh, Public Safety has been doing contact tracing because the Department of Health of the state is overwhelmed. So, they, we've been a good partner with them, I think. Um, and the school districts have also really stepped up in terms of their. So we're working off of the Department of Health official information. They're working off of their own internal intel. And so it's ended up being really a partnership because they're often catching things faster than we are. So we are heads up by them, and then we'll actually follow through with the official notifications and contact tracing stuff. So it's been a good. Then, if that comes through with your county later on, to yeah, we don't have prices in base off of it right now, um, but I mean, something will need to be done with contact tracing. I mean, it's pretty clear to me that contact tracing is going to need to be, need to be done uh, at the beginning of the year, so we need to find some way to perhaps shift something around in our current budget to keep some CARES Act money to do that. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty evident to me that we're going to need do something on that front because DOH can't keep up. And uh, uh, so that's, I think, something that we'll need to take into consideration. That's a good, good catch. Do you have anything to do with disbursements of COVID hazard pay? No. Okay. Thank goodness. No, yeah, not really. Yes, we've, we've been blamed for many pots of money that we have nothing to do with. <laughs> that's one of them. One last thing. It was new to me last week when the Women's Club was trying to figure how we handle our um, vendor sale this weekend. I hadn't realized that events and gatherings are required to, to take names, phone numbers, and the state says where people will be 14 days later. Oh, wow. And I thought, uh, so it was new to me. I brought that up to our board. And somebody said that when they go to their grandson's football game somewhere in Canada, the school district requires that for contract contact tracing purposes. So if you have any inclination to advertise that fact, research it. I mean, it's not just based on what I've said, but right. to advertise that and spread the word, that would really help with it contact tracing. It's amazing. I mean, I've filled out plenty of those forms, but it's usually, you know, name, date, time, temperature, and your phone number. <laughs> I wasn't aware that was part of an executive order. Yeah, yeah I wasn't either. It is. That uh, October 6th, which was effective October 9th, because the last time I looked into it was several months ago, and when I pulled that up just before our meeting, it was like, oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't know that. I'll take a look. Sure. And part of it's found in their Q&As that are a part, a run-on part of that. Anything else? Nothing here. Just hoping we get done in an hour. <laughs> yes, <go>. please. <laughs> All right, then we'll go ahead and adjourn our work session and go back to adjudicating ballots.